Well, bless God. Welcome to the Harvest Conference. Hallelujah. If you are excited, you can stand with me quickly. Hallelujah. So between Eskom and the rain, we have a couple of people still coming. But for those that are already here, welcome, welcome. You're going to have an amazing time. God is going to speak to you. You're going to receive what you need to receive. And you're going to step into the season that God has planned for you. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you that we can come again together and just know that you are with us, Father. Ah, Jesus, you are faithful. Your mercy is endures forever. Father, thank you that you are placing us in this season. You are creating ways for us, Father. You are opening up doors for us because this is a season of harvest. Thank you that we will step into it and none of us will miss it. But Father, we will receive everything that you have in store for us. But as the rain is coming down today, Lord, let it be so in the spiritual realm. Let your presence fall on us, Lord. <laughs> let it overtake everything that we are. Holy Spirit, just come into our midst. Fill and flood us with your full measure, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here with us. Jesus, we just want to welcome you into this room. Ah, just come take over all our plans, all our ideas. Father, just come in. You are so welcome, Father. Moshi Saradi Kadushi. Brunde Alayaradi Ha. Thank you, Father. Rishi Saharadu Kushi La. Lembaradi Tishi Ha. You are worthy, Father. You are wonderful, God. We worship you, God. Rishi Saharadu Kushi La. Hallelujah. Man, just be expectant this week. <laughs> God has something in store for you, and that is far greater than what you can even imagine. The Word says <laughs> that He's going to do something new in your mess, something that you will not be able to perceive because you have never seen it before. This is a time of the harvest. This is a time of the harvest for you in your life, in your ministry, in your family in everything that you do. So be expectant. <laughs> be hungry. Start creating room inside of yourself in order to fill the storehouses of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit. You have not even seen what God has done or has planned for you. So as we're going to go into worship, man, just uh, <laughs> from the beginning of this conference, just open up, man, just drink in. God is here. His presence is here. Just enjoy. the prayer 
That says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we rise, let the church rise, and let love reach to the other side. might not know the song, but it's a good song. We're going to sing it out, sing it loud. Oh, blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, oh, all our creation, now before the ancient of days. And every tongue Your glory and need shall bow at your throne in 
nation All of our creation Now before the ancient of days For the people that don't know the song Can we have the lyrics up on the screen if it's ready? Thank you Sing our blessing and honor Glory and power Be into the ancient of Oh, ancient of days. 
this is how I find my battle It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you This is how I find This is how I fight my battles. This is how I... Sister Voice is singing. This is how I fight my battles. Lift it up. This is how I 
Cause I'll find my better This is how I find my better No 
know that you're approving of what I say and do. And nothing really satisfies like when you speak my name. You tell me that you'll never. Side of your life, sing it over. Everything goes where your river flows. Let your river flow. Oh, oh, oh. Everything goes where your river
Just allow the Holy Spirit to minister you right now. Uh, just open up your hearts. Father, thank you.
Oh man, I just sense an anointing in the house this morning. So <laughs> that anointing that breaks the yokes, that anointing that destroys it. So if you have any problems in your life, man, guess what? You can just throw it on Jesus. He is right there with you. Just throw your cares on Him. As we were singing, I was reminded of a passage about Hezekiah and the king of Syria was coming against him and he needed to motivate the people and he told them, look, God will fight for us. All we need to do is prepare and go to battle because God will fight for us. And the king of Assyria made a mockery of him and said, how can your God? And he compared his God to the rest of the land's gods that they defeated. And the next chapter you find that God smote the king of Syria. So that he had to go back and his own family killed him because he mocked God. So just like Hezekiah said, man, this is not our battle to fight. We just show up and God fights this battle for us. I know this is the harvest conference, but <laughs> This doesn't mean that in the harvest you're not going to have battles. You're going to have battles, but be assured that God's anointing is the thing that sustains you through every situation, through every battle that you go through. It is the anointing that strengthens you, that sustains you. Just this morning, this presence that you have right now, if you can tap into that, it's a limitless supply of His anointing. And this is not just, I mean... The worship is amazing, but God is everywhere. At any time, there's no formula in order to get this. It's the relationship we have with Him. Hallelujah. So the anointing is here, man. Just, just drink it in for a moment. Say, Father, thank you for your anointing. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your healing in my body. Thank you for cleansing my life, Father. Thank you for strengthening me. Jesus, thank you for putting us on a high rock, Lord. Father, thank you that you are our light. You are our shield. Jesus, thank you that you fight for us. Thank you that you are our strength, Lord. You are our joy. You are our peace. You are our salvation. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for this specific moment that we are in. Lord, we just appreciate you, Lord. Every second of it. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this peace. Thank you for this harvest that we are stepping into, Lord. We bless your holy name, Father, for you are worthy of all our praise. Ah, you are good, Lord. We love you. We exalt you, Father. We glorify your name. Father, you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are faithful, God. Thank you that you are everlasting. Jesus, you are good. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, welcome to this conference. Hallelujah. If you are tuned in, man, <laughs> you are not here right now, but you are here via the airwaves, so welcome. You are most welcome. And the rest of you guys in the house, you may find your seats quick, kindly. And then if you found them, you may sit on them. Don't take them away. Thanks, Ben. You guys are amazing. Hallelujah. Everyone tuned in, I see there's people from Korea, Sweden, and lots of other places. Man, you are so welcome. There is no difference in the spirit. So if you're watching, you are here with us. Uncle Donnie, there at the back, hello, welcome. So good to have you guys here with us. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting some great things this week, man. God is gonna be good. So this morning between Eskom and the rain, I think uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a couple of people that didn't get finished in order to be here this morning. <laughs> But uh, they're coming, and Jamon and them, he made excuses. Not excuses, he had some other things that he forgot about. Sorry, Jamon. <laughs> it's not excuses. 
Uh, it's, uh, yo, someone didn't clean the feet before they came into the service this morning. Hallelujah. Great stuff. It's raining outside. But he will join us tomorrow. So, and then I also want to greet my brother Graham from Zanin. You and your wife. Bless you guys. I know you are watching. And all the other friends that are watching. Man, it's so good to know that there are people with us in this family. And that uh, we push together. This is the body. So it's not about a name. It's not about a church. Even though that we are in Spirit Word Ministries, it is not about where we are and who we are and how big we are. It is about, guys, I'm part of Jesus Christ, which is the body. He is the head. If I'm a little pinky, then I'm a happy pinky. <laughs> but every one of you is a part. Every one of you is a part in this body. So welcome Bruce, David, Uncle Dave, my mom. These are the speakers and your mom that's joining us tomorrow morning. I did this a bit different this year. Why? Because I can. Because <laughs> I'm the pinky. <laughs> and uh, Bruce said uh, it's, it's like a sandwich because I'm opening and closing. And Bruce is the mayo, my mom will be the ham. <laughs> David is the tomato. And the mustard. Uncle Dave is the jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, it, uh, let's just, oh, man, before we get too serious, God's business is a joyful business. We need to have fun. Harvest season. Are you ready for the harvest season? Hallelujah. You know, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that goes through my mind when I think about harvest season. How many times, I mean, Bruce, you have been here. David, you have been here. Uncle Dave, I know you have been here. When my dad talks about this verse, he says that you will step into the labor. You will step into the harvest of which other men have labored for. So every time I hear the word harvest, I'm reminded of these things. But when I hear the word harvest, I almost always think of, listen, I've been sowing my whole life through. When is this harvest coming? So is this conference about a physical harvest or a spiritual harvest? I don't, I don't think there's a difference in the spirit. Because if Jesus says harvest, he means harvest. So we're going to step into a harvest of amazing things. Hallelujah. All right. So Sunday, I touched on a couple of things. And before a person can get a harvest, guess what? You're going to put in more resources than what you did beforehand. Because now you have to get some diesel for your tractors. You have to get an extra oatmeal for the workers. You have to get a lot of things in order, in order to prepare for the harvest. And I've always heard my father talking about the harvest and I've always seen this picture of, yes, I'm just going to step into it and it's all going to be mine. I'm going to lay my hands on the sick and they're just going to jump up. I'm going to lay my hands on the dead and they're going to awaken. That is the harvest that I've had in my mind, mind the whole time that if I open the word, it's just going to jump out and <laughs> God's going to speak to me. Yes, I believe that is the harvest. But I never thought about the labor that it takes in order to get a harvest. Hey, Duart! Yes, my own. He's making up for your morn. Hallelujah. And my neck. Sure. Hello, wow, and I'm happy. It's harvest. My friend is back. <laughs> ah, praise you, Jesus. Are you always here? I love you, Mom. Don't worry. I appreciate you. So we need to understand there is a, there is a harvest. Come on, be honest with me. Who of you have ever thought of harvest and you're thinking, yes, sunshine, butterflies, everything's going to be wonderful. I'm just going to reap the benefits. Who of you thought that way? Yeah. Ah, isn't that 
Alexander is en Tanya Leid. Baie dankie vir die eerlijkheid. Ah, Alright, but let's, enough talking, let's go to John 4. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you that this will come alive. Thank you for boldness to speak your word. Lord, use me and let this word be alive. Father, for this whole week, let us be able to know what your heart wants to tell us in this season. Father, you have appointed seasons for everything. Thank you that this season that we are in, Father, this is the season of harvest. Thank you that you will give us (laughs) the directions, Father, and you will show us your ways. Spirit, speak to us. Breathe life into this. Thank you, Father. All right. So John 34, 38 says, I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Hmm. So it says there, others have done the hard work and we step in and reap the benefits of their labor. Are you with me on that one? So what you understand in that is you don't have to work. (laughs) I mean, you can read it like you want to, right? That's how we do the Bible nowadays. (laughs) I'm just joking. Okay, I won't won't be sarcastic this morning. (sighs) Hallelujah. All right, first of all, we need to understand what is the labor and what is the harvest that we are going to step into. This is what I love what my father always said. So many men of God, men William Branham, A. A. Allen, Smith Wigglesworth, Jack Go. Think of all these names. They have labored intensively in this world. They have put in, in the physical and in the spiritual, into the ground everywhere, right across this world. Man, did they receive the harvest that they worked for? God worked signs, wonders, miracles. But these were revivals taking place. Now we experienced the revival year right in Stilfontein. If you don't know we were in a revival, we experienced the revival. So there are benefits that is still in the air that we need to reap. So first of all, we need to understand what is the seed that has been sown. When we understand the seed that has been sown, we can understand what is the harvest we are expecting. Because no man plants a milli seed and expects a wheat harvest. He plants a corn seed, a kernel, in order to receive Kellogg's. (laughs) It's the same as no tree can bear forth good and bad fruit. No fountain can produce sweet and bitter water. No harvest can produce something that it was not planted for. Ah, All right, so what is the labor that we are stepping into? Now we need to understand that there is a labor that we need to step into. In order to receive a harvest, man, there's some things you need to do. Hallelujah. I love this world that we are in. They make it look everything so easy. And uh, I heard a guy talking the other day about it. And he says, people are getting prizes for coming last, for effort. It's taking away the first guy's prize. So it's making it of no value. Because we, how can I say, in the church world we, I've received grace and we just accept everything as is. And this makes us think that everything is easy. Everything is mine to receive. I'm entitled to the kingdom. How many services have we heard that you are a king? You are an heir, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Just because you are saved, the kingdom is yours. Yes, the kingdom is yours. But if you just sit slack and do nothing, <laughs> you are not going to reap the benefits of this kingdom. Hallelujah. 
But none of you here this morning, because I can see kings and priests here this morning, laborers in the kingdom of God, people that understand the word of God. That's you guys here this morning. Now I want us to jump to 1 Peter. I jumped to myself. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1 verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, I just want you to understand that verse in depth. If you read it, then you start seeing there is levels in this one verse that we have never even dealt with. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy. Hallelujah. Just the other day we touched on the mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. All right. So we have an inheritance that is kept in heaven. So that means you need to die in order to get your inheritance. Uh, all right. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is already to be revealed in the last time. All right, so we have an inheritance that is kept in heaven and who through faith is shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So there is a salvation that's coming in the last time. Jesus talks about the last time. He says, in the last days, there will be many false prophets proclaiming to be me. Am, am I correct in saying that? All right. So we know the, he talks about the last times. Now, John Hagee has probably got it right. There is a long time, last times, but um, I think he missed them all completely. <laughs> and I'm happy to announce that we are in the last times because there are so many false prophets around us. <laughs> I'm happy about it, man. It's good news. It means it's time for us. It is time for the salvation of God. It's time for the inheritance to kick in. Because this is now our time of harvest. Why I believe this is the end time? Because the parable Jesus tells about the kingdom, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that goes into a field and sows good seed. When he goes to sleep, the enemy comes and sows bad seed between the good seed. When he awakens, his worker tells him, Master, an enemy has come and sowed bad seed amongst the good seed. What should we do? He said, wait until the harvest when it is fully grown. Because if you pull it out now, you'll pull out the good and the bad. And when you gather it in, you separate the chaff from the wheat and you throw it into the furnace, into the fire. So what happens in harvest time? There's a separation from the true and the false, from the good and the wicked. It's not judgment day where we're gonna sit in front of God's seed. It is right now. It's where the good and the wicked is being separated from each other. It's harvest season. I see Bruce is smiling. <sighs> All right. So who through faith is shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So we are in the last times. All right, no one believes that. <laughs> I'm in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. So amen to that. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith or greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is revealed. Hallelujah. Christ is going to be revealed in you. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. 
Halleluja. I, I see a bello filled with joy. Then Hermina smiled for me now. So. That's say. Mama, have some joy. There we go. Uh, we started experiencing joy last night. And I believe this is going to be a harvest where everything, man, this is why I'm so excited about this. Everything that we've ever seen in any revival is going to be poured out right across the world. <sighs> I don't know if you guys understand that. That is going to be amazing. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hallelujah. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care hmm. the seeds that came before us that was planted in the ground for a harvest searched intently and with greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he was predicting the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. Jesus, thank you. We are stepping into the labor of others. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told to you by those who preached the gospel to you, by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Ah, man, sure. Now, be holy. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed that He is coming. Ah. We believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do you believe Jesus is coming again? I see some confused faces. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, Live out your time as foreigners in a reverent fear. For you know that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. Whew. All right, sure. Getting chicken skin. <laughs> but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, Ah, Jesus, thank you for your blood. <laughs> Man. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in the last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, what is the truth? The truth is the word of God. It's Jesus Christ. He is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can enter except through me. That's what Jesus says. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, and we have to understand there's something about Jesus that we do not understand yet because if we have entered through him, we would have been him to the world, and the world would have known. But a seed has been planted. It has died. And now it will spring forth. So that you have sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart. Huh. I think we should read that to ourselves every morning. For you have been born again. All right? You have been born again. Have you been born again? 
from what? Not of perishable seed. Huh. But of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like glass and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. Why do we worry about today and the things that so easily beset us? Why is these things occupying our minds? It's not kingdom things. It's worldly things. Sure, God wants us to enjoy this world. But that is not what we are born of. So that is not what we chase after. All right, so you are not born of perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. All right, we are expecting a harvest. What harvest are we expecting? Not a perishable one, but an imperishable one. So we cannot link it to things that we can touch, taste, feel, and see. Because these things are things that are fading. Just like the flowers of the field. There is a harvest that we are going to step into. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right. So let's quickly jump to Colossians 3. Colossians 3 starts off like this. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. For you died. Hallelujah. Are you guys still alive? So how do you explain that you have died? For you have died. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you shall also appear with Him in glory. Now, I know we've heard this scripture before. Death is swallowed up by life conference. You guys remember that? All right. So when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with Him in glory. But in 1 Peter, we find that salvation is coming at the last time. What is salvation? Christ. So when Christ appears, hmm, you will appear with him in glory. Now, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. <laughs> Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger. Hey, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Do not lie to each other. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Since you have taken off your old self with these practices and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we have put on a new thing. We have been born again from an incorruptible seed. Now we need to be renewed in the knowledge of the image of His Creator. Creator of what? Of the imperishable seed. Because the imperishable seed is Jesus Christ and God is His Creator. Here then is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, Stilfontanian, slave or free, but Christ is all 
and is in all. Hallelujah. All right, we need to... <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, this is where I want to get to. I mistakenly deleted all my notes, so I'm just going to free this. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, are you God's chosen people? What is in store for God's chosen people? I read it in 1 Peter. An inheritance that cannot be spoiled, that cannot fade away, that cannot be corrupted. That's for God's chosen people. Ah, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, please take note of this first. Clothe yourself with compassion Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. As God's chosen people, clothe yourself with these things. It's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that lives in me. I am clothed with Christ. All right, so let's just take everything that I've shared up until now. There is a harvest. There is good and there is bad. There is a labor that we step into. There is things that we need to prepare. There's things that we need to clear out in order to contain the harvest. But we need to prepare ourselves for the harvest. We need to be ready to step into the labor that is prepared for us. Why? Because I cannot go into the field working like this, my feet is going to be full of blisters because these are office shoes. They are not made for working outside. Now there is a certain clothing that God has prepared for the chosen ones, for the inheritance, for the work, for the labor, for the harvest. What is this clothes? This clothes is Jesus Christ. Here it is explained what Jesus is. This is Jesus. Clothe yourself with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. There is, if you want a sum of Jesus, that's Jesus. That is what we clothe ourselves with. Now, man, God is good. Hallelujah. Yesterday and today I was listening to an old sermon of my father. I love my father. What? An awesome man of God. What a, how, the seed that he has planted in this house. I can never put my name to what is going to happen in this house. I'm merely just stepping into the labor of someone else. I'm just clothing myself with humility, gentleness, kindness. And you know what, if you know my father, not even he will put his name to it. Because it's Jesus Christ. So while I was listening to the sermon, I do not know what the topic is, so I cannot give you the name of <laughs> the title of the sermon because I have a box full of cas cassettes. Cassette. Now I know some of you guys... Uh, luckily I didn't say caskets, that would be wrong. <laughs> Like tapes, double double sided tapes. Now I find a, I have boxes full of these tapes that I'm just listening to in my off time, and in my working time, and all the time. <laughs> and he's speaking about offense, and he's talking about a time that it was in Nigeria and a couple of things. And I know everyone has a story of, and he's touching on things like. He brought a message of offense and everyone agreed that this is the message of the century. This is it. This is the message that the world and the church has been waiting for. And he says a year later, God reminded him of the message and he asked, where is the fruit of this message? And I'm like, yes, you papa. You're touching on something very strong here. 
because even myself, I believe in the kingdom, the peace and the joy, but yet I get offended in small things. Even though, hallelujah. All right, but we're not talking about offense. We're talking about a harvest here. And in this message, I think most of you will remember the vision that he shared. He said he saw God's heart and inside of it was everything. The blessings, the healing, the joy, the peace. But this heart had two locks. And he said the one key is gentleness and the other key is kindness. You cannot be gentle and have offense at the same time. You cannot be kind if there's any form of offense in your heart. So do we struggle to be kind to one another? Now, I'm not taking away situations that is wrong that needs judgment and strong judgment right now. I know there are things that need correction. I know that. I have children. There are things that you have to correct. But how many times do we put the situation above the person and we forget who we're talking to? We're talking to God. Now, in this message, my father says that God was offended with man and he created the law. The law is God's offense towards man. Now, I'm not going to go into that. He proved it, so you can take it. I'll give you the tape if you don't believe me. <laughs> but then grace was given. Grace is the mercy. <sighs> Man, Jesus, thank you. All right, before we get too serious on that one, let's jump to John 4 quick again. John 4 in the beginning, it says, Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. He came to a town in Samaria called Sikar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? These disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am, <laughs> I am a Sumerian, Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews and Germans do not mix. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now you have to understand the significance of the well Jesus is sitting at. Go make a study of Jacob and Joseph's well and then put this into the message of today and you will realize that God has a plan throughout the ages. Doesn't matter what man does, God's plan will always succeed. All right, Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that ask you for a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with the, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? <laughs> now this lady didn't think before she answered him. Eh? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us his well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But everyone who drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give them will become in them a spring of welling up to 
eternal life. Sure, Jesus tells this lady the whole plan of God. Inside of you, there is a spring of living water. Not outside of you. Inside of you, God has placed the inheritance. Not outside of you. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I would, won't get thirsty. And I have to keep coming to draw water. She's thinking about the perishable seed. While God is giving her the imperishable seed. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is that you have five and the man you know <laughs> you have now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worship, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seek. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit. Not in spirit, in the spirit, and in truth. What is truth? Truth is the clothing. It's Jesus Christ. He is the way. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. <laughs> I think Jesus already explained everything to her and she still didn't see it. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Whew. Hallelujah. Then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. Nevertheless, a Samaritan woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? And then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man that told me everything I ever did. <laughs> and now Jesus only spoke to her about her husband, so <laughs> that's all that's in her mind. Could this be the Messiah? Now they came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, these disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Because you are looking at the imperishable to satisfy your needs. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? Now this is where I'm going to. Verse 34. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who? Who sent Jesus? The Father. All right. So we need to understand that the Father is the farmer that planted a seed. Are we understanding then? And the next part, what does that say? And to finish his work. So if God sent Jesus, why would God not finish his own work? Because there is an eternal plan. There is an eternal purpose accomplished in Jesus Christ. There is a place that you need to step into where you gain authority, where you become an heir where you get the inheritance. Because if God finished the work, what would our purpose on earth be? We are not angels. Angels desire to look into the things that we are seeing. God has...
placed his living spirit inside of you. 1 Corinthians 15, he says, the first man, Adam, and the last man, Adam. <laughs> now we are of an incorruptible seed. We are born again of an imperishable seed. Hallelujah. All right, so there is a work that Jesus had to finish. That means Jesus had to die. Why? If you want to harvest, you need to plant a seed. If you want to plant a seed, you need a farmer in order to plant a seed. So we can dissect the whole story of God a bit in order to get to the harvest where we are today. So Jesus was the first fruit of many sons. Now that did happen. The sons did spring up. They did walk this earth. They've been here all along. But God's word is ever increasing. And God's kingdom is ever increasing. So what happens to, to if you're a farmer, you get your crop, you get your harvest. What do you do next? You enlarge your territory. You take seeds from your harvest and you enlarge the next crop. So this has been happening everywhere. Now what do we need in order for seed to germinate? We need water. It needs to be planted. It needs to die. Then the rain comes down. It waters the seed. What happens? Then the harvest starts coming up. Now take this. This is just the introduction to make you understand that the harvest that we are expecting is something different. Right across this world, sons of God has been laboring. Now in this place, there has been a son of God laboring. And we have seen the rain. We have seen revivals come right across the world. Why did the revival stop? Because the harvest is about to come. What does Jeremiah say? He says, I will do a new thing in your midst and you will not perceive it. Forget the former things. Why do we need to forget the former things? Because the revival that we have in mind, we want to see God move in this way. But God is not going to come in that way because it's something new. We keep on expecting something old to reappear. <laughs> Just forget the former. I'm not saying forget where you come from. I'm not saying forget the men. I'm not forgetting my father. I have the biggest respect for him and what he has built on. Even last year, the whole message that we went is redigging the wells and building up the foundation. So we know where we come from. We know where we're going. But we do not hold on to where we come from because we're stretched out to Christ, which is ahead of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John 14. John 14 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it was not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered and said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know the Father. From now on, you do not know him 
Halleluja. Hmm. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Now, what did we read earlier is because of obeying the truth, and we have established what is truth. Truth is Jesus. So Jesus is talking to them about the spirit of truth, but it is the spirit of truth talking to them. So they are still looking to the perishable and not the imperishable. So the world cannot accept him because he neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Now verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I did not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hallelujah. So what, what is the seed that has been planted? What are you expecting in your life? We can take a global harvest, which is God has a plan for the church. And that is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This will happen. And when this happens, then Jesus will be here. But there is a second coming, 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 coming. There is a salvation coming. There is a harvest that is about to spring forth. Now we understand that the church, yes, we're going to a place. Then you have you as an individual. Because all of us are individual members, yet we are members of one another. Everyone having a different purpose. So what harvest are you expecting in your life? Have you given a thought yet? Hallelujah. From what seed are you born? So I'm born from an imperishable seed. It's my bad. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, we've been through some interesting times in this world. Just look at the church history, where it comes from. It was born from Jesus and then it went to, I don't know what they went to. <laughs> but have you seen lately that the Spirit of God has been giving freedom even in religious sections of the church. If God wants to pour out his spirit, do you think man can stand in the way to stop him? So I, I told Alexander the other day, just read Job 38. And Job asked God something, and he says, gird yourself like a man, strengthen yourself like a man, because I will ask you and you'll have to answer me. And God starts asking things <laughs> that no man will be able to answer. Yeah. Yeah. So if that is God, why do we think that we can limit him? But the difference is, we will not be able to see him if we keep on looking to where he was. We cannot see the imperishable if we keep on looking to the perishable. Yeah. 
Alléluia. Just to use a simple example, uh, I had people telling me that if my father dies, they won't believe in God anymore because he preached immortality. So my father dies, and I'm like, so now? What now? <laughs> Why? Because they look to things that they do not understand and try to make that imperishable, but it is. We are still on this earth. Everything that you can see right now is one day going to fade away. Every little thing. And that's what I love about this world because, man, I just want to bring some joy into the house. God created this world to sustain itself. Do you know that? That's why there are seasons. That's why in Genesis it says, as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, cold and heat, these things will remain. Now they have global warming, next they'll have global cooling, and then they'll have global in the middle something. <laughs> Guys, don't watch news. You're just going to worry yourself about things that you can't even change. Take care of what you have, yes. Be diligent in what you do, yes. But God did not make this world to perish. He said that he will never destroy this world again. That's what he said. That is his promise over this place. So for us, yes. He placed us here, yes. For what reason? For the inheritance, for the kingdom. To be manifested sons, yeah. Right now. And how can you be a son? It is the easiest thing. Do you know like these costume parties where you have a costume and the thing is like a full body costume and the cow or whatever you want to do it. It's got the eyes. So when you put it on, you are a completely different being. Now take that verse that I read to you. Clothe yourself with what? With Christ. Why? So that you can be a son of God. Because you, you as a human being, you will never be able to attain righteousness. <laughs> you by yourself, it is impossible. Why? Because we are made to offend. We are made to take offense. That is our nature. My kids don't understand right and wrong yet, but yet they know what it means to be offended. You can see it in the faces when they're angry with each other. They are offended with one another. They've never heard a sermon of offense. So it's in our earthly nature to be offended. I'm just setting a couple of you free. Don't worry. It's nothing wrong with you. It's, that's how you're made. But you cannot enter into the kingdom with offense. You cannot clothe yourself with Christ if you have offense. It's, you cannot throw old wine into a new wineskin. You cannot have offense and be clothed with Christ. So what is the harvest that you are expecting? I'm expecting a harvest of Christ in my life. A harvest of peace and joy. A harvest of kindness, humility, gentleness. Jesus, thank you for that. This is what I want to see in this church. Every time when the devil wants to stick out his head with a bit of anger or something, ha, the body will stand up together. It's always been one person leading. This is what we have. You have a seed that brings forth a harvest. That's why I say it's no longer, it's not my name connected to Spirit Word. I never want my name connected to this place. I'm as much a servant here as anyone else. But there is an office that I have to operate from as well. But there's a time where it's not about, it's not about one person. This is the harvest that I'm expecting, that we as a body is going to step into 
that kindness, that meekness, that gentleness. No more, no more offense, no more of these things. I had some beautiful things I wanted to tell you, but I kind of lost them in my notes. <laughs> All right, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26, it says this. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Can we get that? Hmm. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that it does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Previously we read Christ is all in all, so God is Christ. Christ is truth. Now if there is no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? As for us, why do we even endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Ouch. But we have to be Christ to everyone, so uh, I'm allowed to be friends with these people. <laughs> Bad company corrupts good character. If your character is being changed by the people you hang out with, I seriously suggest that you start hanging out with different people. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. Ouch. All right, verse 42. So will it be with the re resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. Hmm. Jesus, the Son of God, died, was a perishable. He did die. It is raised imperishable. Jesus was raised from the dead. Now he is imperishable. You understand that? It is sown in dishonor, and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. My goodness, do you see this picture? If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last man Adam, a life-giving spirit. <sighs> from what are you born? Are you born from the first Adam? Or are you born again from the last Adam? I love what my mom said on Wednesday. It's not the second Adam. There's not a third and a fourth and a fifth. It is a beginning and end. In our eyes, it's beginning and end because that's the time that we are stuck in. But in God, there is no time. So if we step into Christ, we step into eternity. If we step, clothe ourselves with Christ, we clothe ourselves with immortality. We close ourselves with life. Offense is a killer. It will kill you. The 
The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. Where is our inheritance? We read it earlier. Where is our inheritance? In heaven. So where is the second man from? From heaven. So if we're born again, we are born from a All right, my mom is doing the second service, so she's just going to carry on. <sighs> we are from heaven. We are the children of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't understand it because I saw everything my father did. I know it's just you can copy and paste and everything would work. Yes, I believe everything must work. I've seen people get healed through my hands, but yet there was a pause. And I don't know for what. There's been a dry season, and I don't know for what. There has been a lack in finances, and I don't know for what. There has been a tough time, and I do not know why, because I know what God's plan is, and I know what His purpose is. But I never understood that once the seed dies, there is a time period. There is a time where the ground gets dry, where it gets tough, and then all of a sudden, it produces that first bud. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. No, I, I'm going to leave everything to you and I'm just, I'm just the bread. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the sandwich. <laughs> Bruce is the mayor, guys. He makes everything smooth. And I'm so happy about this because I know this is a season where there is going to be joy. There is joy in harvest time. I want to have joy in my life. I'm tired of things getting me down. Preaching Sunday after Sunday about how you can live your life, but yet there are things that brings me down. Why? I'm tired of it. Why? Maybe it's because I had to understand today that I'm a son of God. And if I'm offended, I move outside of son of God and I move back to Adam. We have, to, we have to take lunch now because it's 12 and our power, Eskom is going to come back on and we're going to lose the stream. So. <laughs> I clothed myself with Christ. Therefore, I'm a new man. Look, man, I cannot, I cannot give you magic words to say in order not to be offended. God gives grace to every person according to their abilities. No man can judge you. So why do you get offended when people judge you? God is the judge. And then yet he says he doesn't judge you. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hey, as someone that doesn't like to be judged, I like it. I don't like to be judged either. If you judge me, I hope you enjoy it. I'll give you a list of things to judge me by. And this, yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe this is going to, the Spirit is going to reveal to the body. And it's going to confirm everything that you heard today. Thank you, Father. 
I'm going to stop now. This is me stopping. All right, are you guys ready to labor? Hallelujah, can I get smiles on those faces? Man, this week is going to be an amazing one. I am so looking forward to everything. And the last morning, please do not miss it. If you have plans to go back on Wednesday night, just cancel them and stay for Thursday morning. Because Thursday morning, I want every, all of us that's going to preach, we're going to have, man, we're going to have, um, sure. Uncle Dave, how's that oil? <laughs> All right, we're going to have something good. You cannot miss it. So, yes, like it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the truth. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this time, Lord. For the rest of this conference, Jesus, just carry on speaking. Let your spirit be in everything. We bless everyone as they're going to go to eat now. Father, let them just enjoy their food and <laughs> enjoy life. We thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, was that a good beginning? Yeah. All right. We see you at 2 o'clock. Please enjoy your lunch and hallelujah. See you at 2. Bless you. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.